Boom! What's up, everyone? Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com, CEO, MTS Nutrition, Exos Trainer, and all-around great guy, I'd love to say so myself. Anyway, this is the Q&A. We rock it out. I have a post on my Facebook page, Facebook.com slash Mark Lobliner, pinned at the top. It'll always be there. And this is the third time I've posted it because each time I've had some epic questions. I answer everything within the realm of non-complete non stupidity. And I um, just want to address a couple things. Um, I missed a question from last time, so this isn't on the new one, but I will address it. It was about SARMs. And uh, another thing is, uh, you know, honestly, I had someone come in here. I used the word retarded and fucktarded when referring to Honey Rambod's FST7 last one. Someone commented on my YouTube that that was insensitive and not politically correct. I would like to say, if you are politically correct or a sensitive little fucking snowflake, as the alt-right calls the left, and I'm not alt-right, but I think it's a beautiful term, snowflake, please leave now because I am honest, I'm up front. Another disclaimer is I might not know the answer, and I might say, like last one, I did not know the answer about muscle flossing. Um, Kelly Sturette does a lot of that. I know about it. I don't know enough to dispense advice, so I am learning about it. And once I know more, I will do a video, and I will try it myself. I'm actually going to defer to my brother to teach me how to do it since he has done it for his injured knee. Um, he formerly injured me. He has fixed his torn ACL. He's rehabbed it. He's up and going and he's still old as fucking bald. Anyway, I might not know the qu answer, but if I don't know it, I will be honest and tell you I don't know it. I like to do this as close to a live Q&A as possible. Keep it within 8 to 12 minutes unless I don't have enough questions and I run out of shit. Anyway, first one from Ninuris Rob. I thought you had a book out. Actually, yes, I do. This isn't self-promotion. This is actually the question I read everything. www.dropfactorbook.com. That's dropfactorbook.com. It's $4.99. There is no ebook. It's only a hard copy. So you got to buy it and ship it. But if you order on tigerfitness.com, it is a free gift on orders over 75 bucks. So buy a couple tubs away and make some gains. It's this book right on, right here, the Drop Factor book. Really good book. Obviously, it's for sale, so it has a barcode and a lot of good information and pretty pictures and charts. There's my book. It's straight. So that's that. Next question is from Randy Sinclair. Thoughts about on this injury. About six weeks ago, I fell in a strange way and bent my neck pretty badly and landed so hard on my left arm, strained my trap rear delt, tricep, and pec. Jesus Christ! Fast forward to the muscles being healed. I'm left with an ache in my left scapula and can maybe 20% strength in my left tricep and even less in my pec. I can barely tense the muscles, let alone flex them. I went to the PCP, got x-rays, saw an orthopedic surgery, got more x-rays, and all just tell me to wait and it will heal. I'm seeing a chiropractor three times a week because I suspect nerve impingement. After six weeks, I've made um, progress towards gaining muscle function. Have you ever heard of anything like this? It's pissing me off as my left arm is shrinking rapidly. I also had... Plan to compete in three body moves shows this fall. Any suggestions? It does sound like a nerve issue to me. Something's not going right. If you can find, I mean, it's worth it being that this is so important to you. There's only one guy I know who can fix shit like this, and that's Dr. Stuart Wee. Dr. Stu is located in Elgin, Illinois. It's called Paradigm Performance. Look up Paradign Performance, Dr. Stuart Wee, H-U-I in Elgin, Illinois. I can't diagnose this. I can't fix this. It sounds serious. Um, Dr. Stu will be able to help this. I'm sure. He'll be able to help you and do better than anybody you're seeing right now. Um, and that's my opinion. Again, you guys, well, you know, this guy is better than him. And that's fine. But this is my Q&A. So fuck you. Um, I think Stu's the man for the job. Go ahead and give him a call. And if you can afford to, fly out here and fix it. It seems like it's important to you. You're a competitor. You care about your physique. You care about your performance. So I would recommend definitely doing it. This is a, uh, a question I, I actually had on my last Q&A that I missed. And I put in the title, but I realized I missed it after the fact. I like to address it. And it's SARMs. Um, you know, there are some companies that are just not identified who actually do tests. I spoke to one of my contacts over at Microback Labs, a great testing facility I used to use for my Tiger Tested program back before I went with Chromadex for a lot of it. And uh, Microback, he says that a lot of these companies are getting tested in and tested out, and there are standards for SARMs. So there are some on the market that are meeting, um, that are you know basically SARMs, that are what they say they are. My only concern would also be the NSF labs, that you can't get it from basically produced in an NSF laboratory. 
I'd also like to uh, just interject here. I did meet with Dr. Tony Huge, um, who is the guy who has enhancedathlete.com. And while I'm not for DNP and uh, the SARMs kind of weird me out, I believe he, he could be in some legal danger. I got to say he's one of the nicer guys I've ever met. Had a great probably 10, 15 minute conversation with him and his colleagues. And uh, I got to say that, uh, you know, I, I don't judge people on their actions. You know, a lot of people make different money in different ways and they do things that I might or might not agree with. But that doesn't mean that we can't personally be amicable with each other. And I think he's one of the nicer guys. Um, while his recommendations aren't what I'd recommend, if people choose to do that, um, you couldn't choose to do it with a nicer guy. So I'd like to... Um, I'd like to really just say thank you to doctor. I don't know if he's really a doctor. I know he was a lawyer, I believe. Um, Mr. Tony Huge uh, for being such a nice guy and for being so cordial and polite and nice and for partaking in a great conversation. And being that I'm a libertarian, he and I have a lot in common with our belief systems. Um, however, I just believe that if laws are on the book, we should all follow them and be fair with it. However, if it were up to me, you guys know I'm a, I'm a libertarian and I think that drugs should be someone's personal choice and regulated by the state, by the state involved. Um, that's not a federal issue. Just my opinion. Again, you have to agree with this. This comes from Tyler Fuse. Hey, Mark, I noticed when I do powerlifting splits with my reps not going over eight to nine reps on squats and deadlifts, my legs look dense and bigger. When I switch over to bodybuilding and still train them frequently, upper body responds very well, but my legs also almost get stringy looking and appear small. I still base my workouts around squats and deadlifts, but as they keep best keep size. Am I not going hard enough on them or should I throw some carbs in during leg days? Any help is appreciated. Well, I mean, when you're doing higher reps, um, you're essentially depleting your muscle, which is why the, the week of the show, um, due to inflammation, all that good stuff, um, we're not doing legs. We're letting those legs compensate, basically. So unless your carbs are super high, you're looking at 50% of your body mass located in your legs. So if you're training with higher reps, you're probably depleting them during training, whereas you're stimulating them and promoting blood flow when you're doing the powerlifting training of less than eight to nine reps. So it's simply a fact that I believe you're depleting glycogen. I don't believe it's reflecting your long-term gains, but at that acute moment, it's just like when I train fasted, I look like shit. At least to me, I look like shit. But when I train after a high sodium, high carb, high fat meal, and that's why before getting on stage, I have a Snickers bar or a Twix or a Kit Kat or some shit like that to get that protein, fat, and, and I'm sorry, to get the carbs, fat, and sugar into my body. So the fact is, I believe you're just depleting the fuck out of yourself, and that's why you look flat and stringy, because you're depleted. And it's not going to affect your long-term results, um, but I also think that you'll stimulate plenty of hypertrophy when you're on a powerlifting split, and all of your, your sessions should be based on the big four, the big four being bench press, squat, deadlift, and, uh, and shoulder press, or overhead press standing, preferably. I hope that answered your question, Tyler. From Joe Curley, the fourth. Mark, I noticed my latest tub of ASCII that looked different from my previous orders. It looked finer, did not have a salty smell anymore. When I tried it, I felt it worked a little better. Was this change in newer VASCI? Basically, we're always trying to improve our pre-workouts. We were able to make it more dry, um, being that Hy Hydromax is extremely hygroscopic. So we worked with the manufacturer and we worked with the producer of this material um, to utilize you know, drying, drying um, agents, basically. Katie's like, bye, Katie to utilize some drying agents like silica to make sure that it comes out finer. Now, over time, we've done stability testing and up to 12 months it remains like that, but over time it might clump up a little bit or, or change color because that's the nature of the nitrosgene and Hydromax, which are both extremely hygroscopic. Hygroscopic means it attracts water in. So while the um, it's psychological, while you're feeling it better, or you could have some extra... Um, uh, diet stuff going on outside of your supplementation, but uh, you're really just noticing the fact that it's finer, it's be it, it, it looks better, the smell hasn't kicked in because it takes a while for that ammonia smell, which smells like semen, to kick out of that thing, but at the end of the day, I think that um, it, it's the exact, it is, I know, it's the exact same thing, it'll test out exactly the same, uh, but it hasn't had time for those ingredients to interact with each other, and, and the water to seep into that hygroscopically and make it change color and also smell bad, which doesn't affect the efficacy one bit. Um, Bob Collar, do you think that modern cutting supplements are still worth it now that proven effective ingredients like ephedrine and DMA are banned? Um, DMA has never really been proven to cut fat at all. DMA is an energy supplement and that's it. It's not a cutting supplement, it's an energy supplement. It does shit fuck all for cutting. 
Okay, there's no data on it. Ephedra has some data, but it's not that impressive. You're looking at the equivalent of maybe 200 calories a day if you're lucky in the best conditions. So I think that cutting supplements like Drop Factor are absolutely amazing. Between teacrine, the coleus, and all those other beneficial ingredients to help you with fat loss, um, Drop Factor kicks the shit out of both of those when it comes to pure fat loss. That's a cutting supplement. Tyrant, in fact, it controls estrogen and cortisol at night. Perfect cutting supplement. What you're talking about, bro, is energy supplements. I'm not selling an energy pill. I'm selling a pill that promotes healthy energy, um, that promotes nice, constant, like teacrine has a nice, balanced energy feel, perfect. Um, but I'm, pr I'm not promoting an energy pill, man. I'm selling fat burners. At the end of the day, my shit helps burn fat. Ephedra, DMA, more of an energy product. Nothing wrong with that. Just saying that I think you got to confuse. Feel doesn't always, not, doesn't always um, uh, lend itself to improved efficacy. Eric Matthews, I take two drop factor and two yohim by HDL at breakfast. Pre-workout before training and two drop factor, two yohim by HDL too much. Uh, before cardio, is this caffeine too much? If not, how much is too much? No. Caffeine studies been done up to grams and grams and grams of doses. The LD50 is extremely high. Yohimbine, you're not ODing it at all. Um, you're not really, I mean, no, not at all. A Starbucks Venti, some of them have 750 milligrams plus of caffeine. You're looking at 250 per drop factor dose and maybe, depending on your pre-workout, if it's like ruckus, 300 of dicaffeine malate, which isn't even straight caffeine. So bro, let's just say you're fine and you're well within the tolerable limit. Um, 11 minutes in, I'm gonna cut it here. See y'all next time, that's not a game. So I'm looking at my email this morning. I get a mass email from one of the other sites that sell supplements that you're just a number to, right? They were bragging that one supplement line was free shipping. Bro, if you order over $99 in product in the continental US any day of the week, free shipping anywhere in the US, at continental USA, free shipping on orders over $99 at tigerfitness.com. Why even look at the other guys? And also, we ship from Vegas and Ohio. Most places in the U.S. are a one to two day ship. And that's not a game.